and let the bitching commence. Now I'm not a tech YouTuber, but I'm also not tech illiterate. I do music, guitar related content, and the extent that I know my way around a computer is to really mix, master my own music, and then edit the content that I post here on YouTube. I'm not really interested in anything beyond that, and that's why I've always been a Mac guy over a PC, really since 2005 when I was forced to buy my first Mac. How was I forced to buy my first Mac? Part of becoming an incoming student at Berkeley College of Music, you have to get a laptop through the college. You have no choice, it's baked in, right into your tuition, and there's nothing you can do about the make, model, or what you're getting. You're getting what the college says you're gonna get. Berkeley calls this the Student Laptop Purchase Program, or some shit like that, and it costs $2,700 all the way back in 2005. God knows how much they're charging for it these days. Wait, how much is 2,700 bucks in today's money? Whew, damn, I am old. Anyway, the brand new Mac that I got way back in 2005 was a IBM powered PowerPC PowerBook G4. And this laptop came preloaded with a whole bunch of software. Again, you had no choice about what you were getting. So it came preloaded with Reason 3, Finale, Logic, and then somebody at the Berkeley Tech Lab who actually hooked me up with a copy of Digital Performer 5. Now my experience in the fall of Aught 5 into 2006 was overwhelmingly positive. This computer was incredible. Everything worked, there were no weird tech issues. Compared to the PCs that I had lived with growing up as a kid, the 286s and 386s and everything when I was really young in the 90s, this thing was incredible. Couldn't believe how well it worked. Then came fall of aught six, and my new incoming freshman roommate got his brand new shiny Mac Pro, and well, f See, if you don't know, back in 06 was when Mac decided that they were going to change from IBM powered machines to these new Intel powered machines. So basically, aught five was just a one shit year to be getting a brand new Mac laptop. This meant that my computer with a different architecture was not compatible with the new Intel machines. Now at least the platform was supported by third party and Apple for a period of time, but the clock was basically ticking. My fancy nearly $3,000 laptop would be obsolete within the next five years. Definitely not a terrific introduction to laptops and music. So, for the last nearly 20 years, my strategy has basically to be perpetually Mac poor, always perusing for what was at least a decent bang for buck option on the used market at the time to try to avoid Apple's absolutely obscene markups on their new products. For the most part, this strategy has actually been pretty successful, I would say. I've been using a 2010 Mac Pro Tower to do most of the heavy lifting for my productions, and then for virtual lessons and other things that are mobile and on the go, I've had a 2014 MacBook Pro. Which brings us to now. I've been very lucky here on YouTube as well as the music school that I've been teaching at for the past 15 years for my in-person lessons in the Philly area. Both my roster of in-person and virtual lessons is essentially totally booked and I'm fortunate enough to literally teach students all around the world that I've met here through the channel. So if you guys are watching, hello, you know, thank you for supporting me and trusting me with your music education. 2023 proved to be one crazy year for me. My wife and I bought a house, and that's why I have a new area to shoot in, as well as the birth of our twins in September. So it's been pretty crazy. And with those twins and being a new parent comes far less time to write scripts and create and edit content. I don't have time to fight with gear anymore. The most obvious machine to upgrade was my 2014 MacBook Pro. Thing was getting a bit long in the tooth and being as that's what I was using mostly from a day-to-day -day standpoint, running my online lesson business, that was the thing that seemed to make the most sense to upgrade. Right off the bat, this shopping process did not go well. While shopping, Amazon was having a sale on the base model MacBook Pro M3. But when I took a look at the specs, I discovered it only had eight gigs of RAM. Now, I don't care what Apple has to say on this one, eight gigs is not enough RAM for a Pro machine. It just isn't. 
even if it's technically faster than eight gigs of your RAM that you'd get on an equivalent PC, it's not enough memory, which introduced me to the first time to the Apple pricing ladder. Point blank, the amount that they're charging for RAM or storage upgrades is obscene and obviously designed to just keep pushing you up further and further until you end up making a purchase way more expensive than you initially set out for. These sort of business practices get under my skin. The Apple Silicon is the equivalent of an engine with a ton of horsepower, but they're putting it in the equivalent of a car with just drum brakes all the way around. In other words, you cannot harness the power of the CPUs and GPUs if you don't have enough RAM or enough storage to get any real work done. Remember, these are pro devices. These are not made for someone who's just web browsing or a little bit of word processing. These are machines made for people to get real work done on them. Not a great start, Tim. So with that out of the way and the frustrating shopping experience over, I decided to pull the trigger on a November 2023 MacBook Pro M3 Pro. Mine is the 14 inch model and has a one gig hard drive and 18 gigs of RAM. The laptop arrived just in the new year, January 2024, and I had already mentally prepared myself for the always tedious process of migrating all of your software over from one machine to the next, rooting around through old emails and trying to find your license codes to get everything up and running. That I was ready for. Everything that followed, I was ready for. The biggest problem with my laptop is it will just cold crash to a black screen completely randomly. This has now happened at least three times while I was actively using the machine and pretty much any time I leave it unattended for an extended period of time. This most recent crash, I was literally just rearranging all of the folders on my desktop and all of a sudden went to click, no response, try it again, click, click, trackpad completely dead, screen goes black, chime happens, reboot occurs. The computer will also crash and need to be rebooted if I close the lid. So. I began to try to list, leave the lid open at night so that I didn't have to go through the entire reboot process. That would also crash when I would come down in the morning. So fine, f it. I'll just turn the computer off at the end of the day. Ah, but see, it can take almost 10 minutes to shut the computer down sometimes, which brings me to problem number two. Now see, what I didn't realize at the time when I ordered my new computer is that the switch from Intel to Apple Silicon was the exact same thing as what happened in 05 and 06 when they went from IBM to Intel processors. Except I would argue this time is actually worse. See, back in the day, if you migrated from your PowerPC to an Intel machine and your PowerPC apps came along the way, they would all be grayed out and be unable to be opened on the Intel machine. It was clear immediately, this software is not compatible with your new machine. That sucks, but it's crystal clear that this will not work. With the current machines, that is not the case. Your applications show up as if there they are. And here on your fancy new machine with this great, beautiful looking new monitor, they're all just gonna work the same. Yeah, they run, but more like a 1908 Model T. Now it might just be bad luck, but all of the third party companies that I use to produce my audio software, with the exception of one, Neural DSP, I will give you credit, all of them are just automatically ready to go for free on the Apple Silicon. The other ones all require updates to not just be janky, hot messes. I find this extremely misleading and extremely frustrating, especially as I was discovering that some of my main applications, specifically Reason, if I'm honest, was just completely unusable on the new laptop. I discovered this while I was helping finish track a little project I was working on with one of my little eight-year-old girl piano students that I teach that it just would not work. Being as a company like Neural DSP can put out patches and make their software one perfectly fine on the new Apple Silicon and others can't, it seems abundantly clear what's going on here. Some companies are choosing to bake in the need to force you to upgrade. And slowly the realization set in that yes, I was going to have to upgrade every piece of software and potentially hardware in order to get everything that worked silky smooth on my Intel machine up and running 
on the Apple Silicon. This meant a $200 upgrade for Reason, a $200 upgrade for Digital Performer, a $40 upgrade for Guitar Pro, which was like a whole thing. It was like I had upgraded to the version I had and then I hadn't registered the license. It was just a thing. I'll never get those 20 minutes of my life back. And then moving on to IK Multimedia and Waves as I use their plugins to produce my audio and fuck, that was a mess. Buggy versions that wouldn't show up in my DAW and then the fact that the old versions of the plugins were not compatible with the new versions. So if you opened up an old project file, it wouldn't automatically populate literally the exact same unit. There was no new features included on these plugins wouldn't automatically populate it. I had to open the project file on my old machine, literally write down by hand what the settings were on the compressor, on the EQ, on whatever it was, and then put in the, like, just, and what if it was automated? Just a complete cluster And then another $81 had to be paid to Waves to be able to renew my licenses to use them on just two machines, as my old license only had one. And then the old licenses just expire after a certain amount of time. Honestly, f Waves. Like, their whole business model is like, half subscription, half you're paying to own it, and, and it's, it's, it's neither. It's just the absolute worst. In my opinion, I would just much rather have it be what it was back in the day. Just gray it out, don't even give it the option or the illusion to make it look like this software is gonna run on this machine. If it's a hot, buggy mess, just don't even let it run at all. Which brings me to problem three. Incredibly, even after upgrading all the software, it's still a hot, buggy mess. Everything crashes all the goddamn time. And it's not just third-party applications I'm having problems with. Even native apps like Final Cut crash all the time. It's a buggy nightmare. Reason crashes regularly now, which blows my mind. In the previous near 20 years of using different versions of Reason, both in the studio and live, it never crashed once, never. And now it crashes all the time. Routinely, it's just a complete mess which is now a new round of problems. Google Chrome is an absolute nightmare for me. I use a video conferencing website that wants you to use Chrome and half of the time, randomly, it just won't be able to access the webcam. It's completely unpredictable. I don't know when it will strike. And when it does, I have to restart the computer. Shouldn't be a big deal, right? Yeah, no, go f yourself. It takes 10 minutes sometimes. Guitar Pros freezes, and that holds up the restart. Then it's Zoom, then it's Finder, and so on and so on. I have not come up with a solution for these problems either. I just make sure I've got enough time before I have a lesson starting that I can make sure the computer is up and running and everything is okay. Moving on. This is where we definitely get into an area where I think there is a little bit of user error on my part. And look, maybe I just don't get what iCloud is supposed to do or how it's supposed to work. My impression was it was kind of like a combination of Time Machine and AirDrop, right? Someplace you can put your files and then they're kind of backed up, but then they're also shared between your different machines that you might have. And then that way you always have access to that most up-to-date file. Sounds fantastic. Problem is, music files tend to be a little bit bigger. And iCloud doesn't give you the option of saying, hey, don't let that specific file leave my desktop. It just automatically whisks everything away to the cloud. Whether you were literally just using it earlier that day, which is what happened to me when I clicked, sure, let's use iCloud, like a prompt came up. Like, All right, let's do it. So about 20 minutes before a lesson, I realized, oh, shit. That project file I need, it's about 1.3 gigs and it's not on the computer. Okay, no big deal, right? 20 minutes, hit the download icon, we'll be cool. Of course not, you fucking idiot. Haven't you watched anything in this video so far? It was bugged. It's a trap. It managed to successfully download all the files except for, of course, one single audio file, which meant I needed to do a restart. But being as restarts can take 10 minutes and my lesson was now starting literally in one minute, I had to just deal with it. 
I can't be 10 minutes showing up to a lesson, especially because he was the first lesson of a five hour in a row gauntlet that I was about to do. Can't be late, because that'll be unprofessional, but also not having the project file that I now need for this lesson is unprofessional, so Okay, lesson learned. Let's not use iCloud, that's a mess. Let's just download everything back onto the desktop and then turn off iCloud. Well, the problem is, I had so many files, especially because I had just shot like a long playthrough in 4K footage, it was like 200 gigs. By the time it would download all those files, the other files had then gone back up into the cloud. So there was no solution to this problem that I could come up with. Have I mentioned that I have two seven-month-old twins? I do not have time to call Apple and be on the phone with tech support. So fortunately, checking Time Machine, I realized I had a backup pre-cloud upload and figured, okay, let's just deactivate it. Damn the scary error message and we'll be fine. Deactivate computer locks. Completely freezes. Have to hard shut it down, reboot it, and the entire desktop is blank. Everything is gone. Even the files that had downloaded from iCloud but hadn't been whisked away yet. Everything was gone. Even Time Machine then got weird. It had like seven backups and then it ended up it only had two backups. Fortunately, the one was the one that I needed. And then that led to like this whole cluster where my hard drive was full because of a stupid thing I did in Final Cut, like, which was my fault, but like it led to this whole problem with time. It was just a mess. That did all get sorted out in the end. Either way, iCloud, not for me. And now everything else. There was enough miscellaneous problems that I feel like they didn't need to get their own sections or was gonna stick everything here. I am done with IO changes. The dropping of ports, the changing of cables, I am done with this shit. It really pissed me off when Apple dropped Firewire support, whenever the hell that was, as I had four different audio interfaces that of course all used Firewire. And now this switch to USB-C has been a complete pain in my ass. Since I've been Mac poor for basically 20 years, of course everything is USB-A. My iLock is USB-A, my backup drive for my time machine is USB-A, everything is USB-A. So now we're in dongle hell again, which is definitely where some of my crashing problems are coming from because my older Motu Ultralight Mark III is also USB-A. And the software that runs this little interface is also older Intel with no updated version for Apple Silicon. We're gonna circle back around to that interface later. So the very first thing to go wrong was trying to transfer files over from a USB-A flash drive through my USB-C adapter dongle to copy all those files over onto the new computer. It would transfer smaller files just fine, no big deal. But anything bigger would crash. It would just basically eject the flash drive, error message, unplug, reinsert, Smaller files, fine. Bigger file, go f yourself. Now I know it's not the USB hub that I'm using. Why can I say that? Because I'm connecting my time machine backup drive through the exact same USB hub and it can transfer hundreds of gigs of files perfectly fine. I also know it's not the flash drive. If I plug that into any of my older Intel machines with a USB-A port, everything transfers perfectly fine. It's just when you take these two things together try to use them. Add to that, some of the files I would transfer over would disappear. I literally watched them transfer over and then vanish. First night using my computer, even the most simple of tasks is already being a pain. After doing a teeny bit of Google searching, I discovered there was some sort of weird bug where sometimes when you drag and drop files over from a flash drive, it moves them into some sort of an invisible file type that Apple does automatically so you don't mess with really important system files that you don't need to mess with, basically. No idea why it was doing it. Another 10 minute reboot and now they're back. I literally have no idea what the issue was. I don't really have a fix for it other than now they're there when I couldn't see them before. Let's circle back around to that audio interface. My Mo2 Ultralight Mark III, it's an older unit, is one little beast of an interface that I feel like not too many people talk about or know. This little half space rack size unit has 12 inputs and 10 outputs out of this little teeny guy. It's incredible. It's the whole brains of everything that I do, either potentially for a band to play live, 
because I could do all of the in-ear mixes for everyone and the outputs to front of house, as well as using it for my online lesson setup here at home. Well, Motu is not releasing any sort of a new updated version of the software that controls the hardware unit. Hardware unit works perfectly fine. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Just the software to control it. Any idea how much a new interface is? Yup, it's $600. Wow. My laptop is also the wrong size. I made a huge tiny mistake. I was going from a 15 inch MacBook Pro now to the 14 inch and immediately realized I missed the real estate. Now I couldn't afford the 16 inch and I also don't want a computer that's that freaking big. I like the 15 inch size and the smaller one I am disappointed by. I'm also sick of getting a brand new version of OS X every fall. It's the absolute worst. This trend began with the iPhone, which was fun. It's a consumer level device. So when you get a new update, it's fun. It's like getting a new phone. But when you use a computer as a job with a ton of third party apps, every year it's the same freaking thing. New operating system comes out, followed by a barrage of emails from all the third party companies begging you to not upgrade yet because nothing is ready to run on the new operating system. I'm guessing that Apple is just holding the software so close to the chest that when it finally comes out, third party companies don't have a chance to mess with it until it's released. But please stop. We do not need a new operating system for our computers every year. Two to three years is perfectly fine. So are all of my problems because of Apple? No, of course not. Are some of these problems because I was a bonehead and did something stupid with my computer? Yeah, probably. But you know what? F you. I haven't had a good night's sleep in seven months. Twins is hard, man. So Tim, Tim, honey, Tim Apple. We appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Please, for the love of f let this be the change that sticks for a while. I cannot live through this bullshit a third time. Am I gonna change to PC? Absolutely hell no. That is even worse than everything that's going on with Apple, and at least I vaguely know my way around a Mac. I am not going to completely relearn my keystrokes, relearn everything workflow. I'm sticking with Apple. I am not gonna change to PC. Does this suck? Yes. Am I happy? Absolutely not. Am I going to change? No way in hell. This also isn't going to stop me from upgrading my ancient 2010 Mac Pro Tower to probably the Mac Studio when it comes out, powered with the M3 chip. Hopefully, I will have far less problems when that day comes, and probably about a year from now, and just fingers crossed that everything gets better over the course of the next year. Wow. With that, Thank you for listening to me vent and bitch and complain about my first world problems with my stupid f***ing MacBook Pro.